Hey guys, well welcome back to Think About It, where you can daily digitally come in and check in with me for thought and an update, all from a biblical worldview and all in under three minutes. Remember this week's focus is back on the book of Jeremiah, so to check out some important context, be sure to look at the last episode, episode 16 called Sinful Stubbornness from Sunday. But today's a new day. Today's Monday, and Monday's thought and challenge is coming your way right now. Now you've probably heard the phrase hindsight is 2020. Means it's always easier to speak to the past after we've experienced it rather than experiencing it in the moment. But it does seem that many are now questioning a lot of the decisions that we've been making since March. Many uh, health authorities are asking if ventilators are doing more harm than good. Children are now out of school going online, but many are questioning if that was the right decision. Children seem to be resistant. Maybe they could have been used to help boost the antibodies and create what's called a herd immunity. And some, many families at least are asking, is the closed economy going to be worse than the virus itself? But one thing that we don't have to question, and unfortunately something we don't like to hear, is that this crisis isn't creating our character, but it is revealing it. Times of trouble have a way of showing what's in our heart. And what's in the heart is really a theme all throughout the Bible. People may act a certain way, they may claim to have all the answers, but only God knows the true condition. And it's often what other people can't see. And the truth of Scripture is that if your ultimate hope is in yourself or in other men, you can guarantee eventual disappointment. Consider God's words in Jeremiah 17, beginning in verse 5. God says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands, in the parched places of the desert where nothing lives. But then in verse 7, we see a totally different verse. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Trusting in the Lord is then compared to a tree planted by a very steady stream in verse 8. The heat can't wither it, a drought can't destroy it, its leaves are always green and it always produces fruit. Totally opposite of what we saw before. It's then that God makes these statements, beginning in verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, beyond cure, who can understand it? But I, the Lord, search the heart, I examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Is it not striking that before you today you have two choices? of whether your life is gonna be like a bush in the desert or like a stream planted by streams of water? Is it not interesting that you have a choice of whether you're going to have no life or if your life is going to bear fruit? What's the distinguishing factor? What's the difference? It's all based on what's in your heart. Either you deceive yourself with your own self-sufficiency or you humble yourself and trust God in his ultimate sovereignty. But it seems to me that following your heart may make for a good Disney movie, but it makes for a terrible way of life. We may depend upon hindsight, but our Lord does not. Hindsight is not even in his vocabulary. He sees all, and our hearts are on full display before him. But the question today is, do you want to turn and look at his display and see what's inside? Think about it.